All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Today I'd like to talk about uh, the five reasons why I prefer the Fedora distribution um, for Linux as opposed to the other distributions. Uh, certainly um, there are reasons why the other distributions are good as well and I'm not saying that these five reasons are exclusive to just Fedora or that um, they're reasons why anybody else might want to use Fedora Linux but they're the reasons that I use it and I'm gonna get started here uh, the first reason that I use Fedora Linux is that it's ready to go after you do the install um, what I mean by that is after you you, and you don't even have to do the install if you want you could use a live CD or a live USB um, but all the applications that you need to do what most users do are ready to go straight out of the gate um, I like that it includes Firefox um, KDE has its own brand of browser and I realize KDE isn't a distribution but an interface um, but some don't include the Firefox browser and Firefox is my primary browser that I use on any operating system um, it also has LibreOffice installed uh, by default and some other tools that are what a user might need on average. Um, some distributions do not provide that. One example is Slackware, which doesn't even have a graphical interface initially. Um, another example, although it's not a Linux distribution, is FreeBSD, which also does not pr provide a graphical interface. There are distributions out there that do provide everything straight out of the gate uh, initially, like Ubuntu. I just happen to like the way Fedora is set up. Number two, it's truly open source. Um, before the comments start flying, I just want to qualify what I mean by that. Um, yes, all of Linux is open source, but the parent companies aren't necessarily um, open source, if you will. So in this case, uh, all the packages that are used on Fedora are truly open source packages from nonprofit companies, uh, as far as I know. So what you get after the installation is all open source and it's from a uh, nonprofit organization that oversees the distribution of Fedora Linux. Other distributions may include commercial products in their distros. Um, Linux Mint is one example, although they are making some changes. Um, uh, the popular Ubuntu is another example. If there wasn't a Fedora, I probably would be using um, Debian which would be uh, about as close to my what I use Linux for and what I expect from a distribution. So that's what I mean by truly open source. Um, it just basically means that uh, the all the packages provided are open source. If you want anything that's not open source, that's proprietary or commercial, it's up to you to install it. Um, one of the popular repos is RPM Fusion and the RPM Fusion non-free um, repos uh, which basically give you codecs and other um, tools so the codecs of course so you can watch popular videos um, an mp3 codec um, so you can play mp3 back and, and things like that um, those are not considered open source uh, therefore they are not included or supported well, they are supported, but they're not included initially, and it's not something you're going to get from Fedora. All right, moving on. Uh, number three, Red Hat and Fedora are consistent with their quality and have been around for a very long time, decades. Uh, if you're using um, Linux in a commercial business environment, um, even a not non-profit business uh, Red Hat has been around and is well supported um, yes Red Hat the company is a for-profit so <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, some may argue that, um, you know, its interest is in its own company and not in um, the product, but you could say that about any company, right? Uh, Fedora, on the other hand, is a nonprofit organization that um, consistently releases Fedora um, every six months and has been doing that for a very long time and longer than most distros that are available. So they uh, have a very mature, um, qualitative distro and you come to expect certain things from Fedora. One is, um, for example, if I did an upgrade, I'm not going to have a problem uh, running Fedora and doing the upgrade to the new version. I should be able to do an upgrade without uh, disrupting my work. I should be able to continue what I'm doing. Number four. It uses the most modern UI. And again, this is up for debate, but this is my opinion. I'm not saying that other distros don't use modern UIs. But uh, Fedora decided to go with its default uh, graphical interface as GNOME 3. And many people do not like GNOME 3. And I'm going to give you my uh, basic opinion on why that is. If you look at uh, GNOME 3 and how it works... Um, you will not see similarities to Windows. Um, you're going to see similarities, on the other hand, to Mac. So the problem with that is most users are used to a Windows-like interface. So they're used to the GNOME Classic, KDE, Cinnamon something that has a windows like appearance and feel with the you know common start menu down in the left hand corner and so on uh, if you look at gnome 3 it actually emulates um, OS 10 or OS X from uh, Apple more than anything so I've kind of skinned this to look more like uh, OS X OS 10 but um, it has a toolbar here which is movable and always has been movable. Um, I prefer it on the side because I have more real estate on the side than I do on the bottom. Uh, its display of applications is almost identical uh, to the Mac. Um, if you look at accessing files, same thing. It's really extremely similar to Finder in Mac. So many of the nuances of GNOME 3 is more like a Mac than it is like Windows. And users enjoy, well, most users that are coming to uh, Linux of some type have come from Windows. Mac users, on the other hand, um, are not as likely and this is again my opinion I don't have any statistics to back this up but in my experience and when talking with people who use Macs um, they're more likely to stay with their Mac that they've spent a lot of money on number one and number two they're happy with the interface um, certainly there are shortcomings to OS 10 as much as there is to Windows 10 or any other interface but overall I do like the GUI that is supplied with Fedora 23. GNOME 3 to me is the best interface. Um, I didn't like it at first. It took me some time to get used to it, but eventually I did. And now I've found that it, it for me, it works the best. And last, uh, Fedora has excellent hardware. Uh, support and most importantly in my case high DPI support so uh, this particular system is my um, uh, Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro 13 inch uh, it's the i7 with 8 gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD what I like is that of all the distro distros at the time when I bought this Yoga 2 only one supported the high DPI display, and that was uh, Fedora 21, and it was actually in beta at the time. So I went ahead and used the beta uh, as my production machine, 
and I did not have any problems whatsoever. I did try Ubuntu at the time. Uh, I tried Linux Mint, and I tried CentOS, um, Debian, and one other that escapes me right now. So I wanted to see if it would support the hardware, but um, at the time, the only one that worked was Fedora 21. The other component that simply would not work with the other distros was the onboard Wi-Fi card. And I worked very hard in Ubuntu and Mint um, to try to get the Wi-Fi card working. And I consider my Linux skills uh, above average, and I was not able to get it to work. Fedora 21 had built-in support. I went with the beta um, when it became uh, when it was officially released. I moved to Fedora 21, and since then I've been using some uh, version of Fedora. On other hardware, I've actually been using Fedora for probably 10 years now. Um, what I usually do is run a virtual machine. Um, of my Windows system which works perfectly fine for me I don't actually have to concern myself with uh, Windows now I've got the font set really large right now to make the screen readable and this app is not doing too well in using the GTK standard um, that is supposed to be used in GNOME 3 for displaying but overall with high DPI displays um, Fedora seems to work best. Now I'm certain with the recent release of um, the Ubuntu distribution, I think it's 16.04, uh, I'm sure that they have high DPI support. I'm sure that the Wi-Fi card would now work. But if I'm going to be buying a new system, I want to go with the distribution that I know is going to work right away. Uh, again, kind of goes along with number one, ready to go after install. So I have an expectation that if I'm going to install the software, everything's just going to work. That's the best bet. Uh, so anyway, those are my five reasons for using Fedora Linux over other distributions. And I'm not saying that the other distributions don't have um, something to offer a user. And I'm not saying that they don't include some or all of these features. I'm just saying that for me, Fedora seems to work best. Um, I certainly love experimenting with the other distributions. I enjoy seeing what they're doing and what types of innovations they come up with. So I would not um, disparage or make any negative comments on any of the other distributions. This is just what works for me. Um, I hope it helps out. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. And I'm always interested in your opinions. What distributions do you use, if any? Um, have you thought about moving to Linux or experimenting with Linux? And if so, what was your decision? Um, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.